Hi everyone, welcome to our video again. So today we have what to expect in technical coding challenge as a topic. And we have four panelists and they are our advisor to give us uh, their experience. So let's start with the introduction. Yeah, sure, Jason. So mm -hmm. we would all agree that it would be very, uh, it would be really great if we could know what questions would be asked in the interview. Uh, but this uh, series, uh, video series is mostly focused to at least prepare you to, about what you can expect in the interviews. So let me just brief you about what to expect uh, in an interview. Uh, so you'll be given an interview, uh, a technical problem, which will be similar to a lead code problem and you'll be expected to solve it within within a given time. Also, you should know that you'll be graded based upon various criteria, uh, like your coding style, the efficiency of your solution, the ability to communicate, and your approach. So uh, you'll get more insights as we move ahead. So let's get started. Yeah, we have four or five questions today. Let's jump into the first one. What's your approach when you see the problem? Yeah, maybe I can uh, answer this. Uh, so, so what I would do is I would read through the problem carefully and understand if there are any constraints, like uh, should I be uh, using extra memory or should I be solving it in a specific, uh, for within a specific uh, time complexity or not. Because that way it just gives you, um, uh, I mean, enough information about how can you solve it in a, in a, in that restrictive manner? And I mean, and there is no harm in asking those clarifying questions to to the interviewer, thinking out loud about your uh, problem. What all data structures are you thinking about uh, using in there, and how are you actually going to uh, use them to solve your problem? So that is one of the way you can approach. Definitely true. And by talking about understanding the questions, uh, most of the time we think uh, understanding the questions is harder than solving the questions because it, it takes so long. Also, we need to clear the edge cases, time complexity requirement, and then we can start from there. After we clean that two part, and then we ask them, is that solution looks good to you? By asking them, then we can clarify it's out wasting time, like uh, give out the wrong one. So what will be the next after saying out loud the solution? Doing a dry run, using some example to go through the code and addressing edge cases, if any. So that would be the next step, I feel. Sometimes I will use a board to make them more visualizable and we can start coding. Eventually, when we, we, we will uh, do some test cases to test out the function, then uh, probably that's, that will be it. We jump to the next one. And you, now you know the approach of the questions. During that process, what are they looking for? What are they looking at your performance? I think I can jump in on this. So uh, I would say during a technical interview, they're looking for how you approach problems and basically you know, how your mind works when you see these types of algorithmic questions. And they wanna see how you break things down at a technical level, as well as your understanding of a lot of fundamental computer science concepts. I feel like Ben really care about the fundamental. <laughs> It's always good. Yeah, and maybe just to add to that, how do you, your ability to think, your clarity in thinking, uh, your skill in communicating your ideas is something that they are looking for as well. Yeah, it's true. If the future teammate is interviewing you, then they will care about how good they feel to work with you. Working with you, if it's efficient or like how interacted, uh, just basically focus on this question and done. Make a conversation lightly, then probably some tips there. And there also one really good thing of the fundamental is how code looks. So code is your digital appearance. 
if you have extra space there, not the extra line there, and then wrong <laughs> variable name, really confusing logic. And that that's really important for them to look at your code and follow you too. So that's something that they will evaluate in the process. Correct. Following the coding standards, simple simple things like camel casing, using good words, uh, using good nouns or verbs to kind of for your uh, methods, for your variables is something that they will look for and that will be quite evident uh, once you start coding. Yeah. Cool. So what's tips and tricks for passing the interview? So I can start. The main, uh, the main thing that I feel uh, is important for passing the interview is, and that will be expected for you to know is, the time complexity and the space complexity. If uh, if a computer science student is not able to answer that part correctly, it, it doesn't make a really good impression. So I would really uh, say that please be well versed with the time complexity uh, of the solutions that you kind of give. So yeah, try and practice more on that part. Knowing the time complexity and it's really important. One of the evaluation too. And I also have a tips for, for people who suddenly forgot the syntax. Oftentimes we forgot the syntax. We want to use this way, but we forgot. What do we do? There's a violation that if you ask certain time, for example, you ask him for more than three times, they will downgrade like a high to weak high or no high. They have the grading system there. So try to use it carefully. You can also ask. If you have a perfect solution, best, the best communication ever, sure, you can use that quota. But if you are in the borderline of passing and then you keep asking those, give them a really bad impression, then I will prefer going to the other either structure or maybe other solution to solve that problem. Um, yeah, I also have a tip. I would say uh, keeping constant communication be, with the interviewer is really important. So just talking about your thought process, um, why you're choosing a particular data structure. I think uh, in my experience, if you are constantly talking, and even if say you get stuck on a particular part, you know, if you can clearly explain at least your thought process, why you're going down, why you're choosing a particular data structure or just approaching a problem in a particular way, oftentimes an interviewer might drop little hints to try to get you back on track or to, you know, if they don't like that approach at all, they'll drop hints on that. So I would say just keep talking as much as possible. You know, don't sit there in silence and code. All right, uh, we're jumping next question. So if I didn't finish the code, which is really common, does that mean uh, I fell? Yeah, it depends. If a candidate didn't finish uh, their code, uh, but if he like is, uh, explains uh, his thought uh, very clearly, such as uh, using what approach to solve the problem and uh, what kind of data structure he or she uh, will use, and or and the analysis of the time or and the space complexity. If he or she explains all those things very clear and he or she just has no time to finish all of the code, I think it will be fine. Sure. Well, uh, I should say, it's, you know, you should have self-confidence of yourself like during the technical interview. So it's not really about if you didn't finish, it's about like how you finish the code or how you didn't finish if you have like more than 20 30 of interview oftentimes you encounter some code that you didn't finish and some questions just hard uh, and take out a lot of time in the beginning uh, it happened to me i finished the code but i am really close of finishing maybe four or five lines and at that time, I told him, I'm up, but I, I tell you, this is my process and it will work. And demonstrated like 20 lines before to demonstrate how good I understand the 
coding and the syntax, it's really convincible that they, I will finish it, but just time matters. And I got the offer by not passing the code. It's the uh, evaluation before that matters. So the last question then, what's a piece of advice from you for passing this uh, technical interval? I would say uh, if you like during the, the process of interview, just try to be calm and confident. Be confident is like uh, to act as, you know, a lot of a strong, a solid knowledge base even if you, you don't know the best, uh, best practice, or if, if, even if you don't know how to solve this problem, you cannot be panicked. You're trying to uh, work with your interviewer and uh, to find out a way to solve a problem. It's very normal in the real industry that you don't know how to solve a problem. Just trying to collaborate with anyone else to find out a way is a very important thing uh, in, uh, for working in the industry. So uh, yeah, that's my advice. Yeah, it's really true uh, to see how much uh, due diligence you wouldn't do. Uh, it remind me one of the advice that uh, it's oftentimes you, you don't know the thing, but try not to, I mean, don't pretend you know, because technical is not behavioral. Technical, if it asks you one more question and you're totally showing. Uh, oftentimes, if you don't know, they might tell you and you can learn from it. Perhaps one such advice would be practice uh, uh, as much as you can. Perhaps take some mock interviews uh, with your uh, colleagues. And that way, I think it will give you enough time to prepare and be accustomed to the environment. Yeah, it's true. Uh, especially we can often uh, have appointment with you as an advisor. Uh, one of good advice is, uh, try to be the interviewer instead of an interviewee. Standing, become an interviewer would, I always tell the interviewee, like the students say, I only need three minutes to know how good you are. I don't need the 45 minutes. Turn the three minutes and know how, how good is your understanding of data structure and how your communication skills. The rest of the time maybe is the time that you prove that I'm right for that three minutes. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that is so true. Uh, I would say that uh, try and get some feedback as well if you're doing mock interviews with your friends or with career peer advisor uh, to kind of understand uh, what are the areas uh, on which you need to work more and improve. So in that way, you can uh, improve yourself for interviews. Yeah. So is there anything else to this video? Uh, if not, uh, then thank you so much for your time. Uh, your idea is really valuable for us. Uh, this is the last series uh, for this chapter. I'll see you in the next series and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.